Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to the sounds of various fans and a couple of little ladies sleeping behind me here as I finish off a very long and busy day with my own replay. With the way that I have my recording software set up, Shadow Plays sort of causes issues with War Thunder once again when I set it for longer recordings. So I just have it record the highlights and have like two and a half minutes of replay. So if I'm going to show you an entire match, I gotta go into the replay just like everyone else. But I'm trying something a little bit different with this one and I'm cutting in the live gameplay for the kills. So I hope you enjoy that. And I also hope you enjoy this custom camouflage of the M18 Black Cat. And this is the Neon Cat. <laughs> so it is Neon Historical, obviously. And here I'm going to begin a conversation on something I like to call War Thunder Chess. The M18 is a fantastic example of uh, perhaps a bishop in the chess lexicon, but a vehicle that can cross territory rapidly, that performs well when you have the initiative, and can get out of the area of danger rapidly as well. And that's sort of how you play a bishop. It's a piece that can move diagonally. It's not the best for attacking masses of enemy units, but if you can hit and run, poke and move, then the M18 is quite good. Now because it has no kind of stabilizer, and that is something you miss after the Shermans, you are going to need to have the initiative on the enemy either closing from an unexpected angle at close range, or attacking from an unexpected area at long range from a prepared position and that's where you're going to see me doing well with the m18 we set up there's our target type 61 gun is clearly on target for a side shot did the fence just eat our APHE? you know what i think that was a ghost round i'm afraid to say they have not been fixed so uh, i'm not one to bash on gaijin i understand that bugs can be very difficult to track down but that's definitely one that is still in the game. I honestly believe that they did some things to try and address the issue, and I think it's actually linked to the way hit recognition works in the game, which got a little bit screwed up with the last major update. And there, you see me targeting an ally. I was following his engine sound and just making sure visually whether he was friend or foe. Now that there's no more engine sounds in the area, we know it's safe to push up to a new position, and that's definitely a good idea. For sure, the guy I just killed in the Type 61, and I think we'll see more of him, is able to respawn in another vehicle, and if I was him, well, I would know that there's at least one M18 in that area, and I might just come back looking for some revenge uh, to restore the family honor. In any event, here you see us going to the live feed which tells you there's another kill coming up soon. Can you guess where and how? Well, I couldn't, but I was keeping my eyes open, checking the map every now and then, and also trying very hard to be aware of my surroundings, and there he is, a spaghetti, and I think we actually managed to finish him off with the 50 cal before our main caliber round reached his vehicle. So the side armor of those Italian wheeled vehicles, not the best, especially compared to Ma Deuce's punchy hits, and we go back to the replay. In that instance, keeping our head on a swivel and being in a position where the enemy did not expect us to be was the reason we got that kill. It also helps that the Italian SPGs are not all that good at gun handling, even worse than the M18, with some very sloppy hull traverse 
and a lot of difficulties if they're not the first person to lay gun on target. All of this, again, War Thunder Chess. Imagine that every hit by the enemy will cause you to die. Be the first to fire. Speaking of fire, I was kind of expecting to set off that ammo rack and not his transmission. But you take what you can get. A second shot going directly through the rear ammo rack. No ammo explosion. A third round. Did that look like it passed through ammo to you? Because it looked like it passed through ammo to me. And you say, but Toshio, that's the 105 Tiger II with its two-stage ammunition. No powder charges stored in the turret. But I reply to you, those are armor-piercing high-explosive rounds. They should explode when they receive critical damage. It seems like they have a massive amount of hit points. Now, the first time we get noticed by an enemy, we take our shot, and we knew that he fired earlier. We heard him fire, and now we're bugging out. We're looking for a path that's going to help us reposition and also stay hidden from the enemy. He opens up with his machine gun, a second panther, aware of our location because we were pinged on the map by his ally or perhaps in direct communication with him. Our only chance is to out-traverse him and he is in a panther that has a good hull and turret traverse. This is going to be the end for us. We soak another shot. We have one chance here with a locked turret ring to get our gun on target and we fire too early. I swear that never happens to me, but maybe if it does... You get a tank baby out of the deal, so not bad at all. <laughs> anyway, more look at the randomness of the War Thunder replay system. And I know why I died in that circumstance. I was not set up in a good defensible position. I had to relocate for three or four seconds to get to a place where I was secure from the one enemy and I was caught in a pincer attack between two panthers. And once again, if this is War Thunder Chess, that was a checkmate. So, I kind of want to get you guys to think this way when it comes to matches. Play War Thunder like it's a game of chess. And not everybody's great at chess, but maybe at least pretend it's checkers. <laughs> now, what do I mean by that? Picture in your mind where enemy pieces are likely to be. Generally, people capture the capture zones. As you can see so even if you don't see where the enemy tanks are oh yeah was that a triple kill from a nice high bombing position yes it was so even if you can't see the enemy on the map you can presume where they're likely to be most people move through areas that are easier to drive through along roads through uh, valleys and ravines places where the ground is hard and also they have cover on their sides as they reposition. Those who drive along ridge tops soon find themselves destroyed, as you're about to see me. And also, watch this bomb drop. So we were going down anyway. That really looked rather close to that panther. Didn't seem to do a whole lot of damage. Ladies and gentlemen, American 500 pound bombs. So, talking more about War Thunder Chess. So, check your map. Know the location of enemy forces. See where your allies are dying. Generally, there's an enemy with line of sight to your dead ally. So, you can quickly estimate where they are from that information. We'll speed up the replay a bit here to get to the action. Set yourself up in a good defensible position generally behind the first line of troops. Again, if this is chess, imagine that your allies are pawns and their job is to soak damage for you. There's no shame in being in the second line of troops. You are the first person to be able to fire on whoever is shooting at your repositioning allies. And once your teammates have set up in a good firing position, as you see with that Centurion or STRV up there, I did stop to scout the target. Now I'm pushing up to take the front as he secures the kill on, I think that was another Panther, if I'm not mistaken. 
So one person pushes, then you can push forward to assist them. It generally doesn't help to push up past your reinforcements. But if you decide to do that, move to a position that has good soft cover, that is cover you can fire through, uh, enough to where the enemy won't have a direct line of sight to you. Don't set up a huge walking smoke screen like that tiger did, telling the whole world where his position was going to be. <laughs> That's what you call a mistake. But check out this position. We saw one enemy pushing through that area. We're now in some bushes that mostly conceal us from that angle and we can still peek around them with the third person camera. Switching to binocular view with the poor elevation of the commander's position on the T-114, one of its few downsides as a scout car it's difficult to peek over cover, so it's more useful to peek around cover. And what's this? A panther going along the same course as that tiger. We start aiming just a bit sooner and have a similar hull traverse. We thankfully get our gun right on target and get a lucky shot into his ammo rack. If the T-114 is a chess piece, it's probably a knight unpredictable, mobile, not the most reliable attack patterns, but with the ability to jump around and cause some damage, especially from, well, what one would consider closer ranges than the M18 can pull off, at least at its own battle rating. Notice how we started with the Hellcat, though. It is one of the fastest vehicles that the Americans have access to, able to rival the commonly encountered uh, Sonda Kraftfahrzeug, Pumas, and what is the RU-251, which is one of the most prolific and useful premiums in the game. T-114, more of a meme machine, but definitely a mean machine when in the hands of a skilled, lucky or careful player. You can be one of those. <laughs> Sometimes you can work your way to being all three. Ivan this time, an ally. One of the downsides of the T-114, no anti-aircraft armament, and you can see us maxing out our elevation at, I think it's plus eight, maybe even plus six. It's really bad on the T-114. It really doesn't need to be that bad, but well, maybe there were some other design features that caused that to be a necessity. I'm not really one to complain. So, let's talk more about chess. In chess, every piece is expendable. Except the king, of course. But you play your pieces with a mind to get the most value out of them. Uh, but sometimes, you need to sacrifice to get the game rolling. Well, what does that mean in War Thunder? In realistic battles, you have as many spawns as you have spawn points and crew slots. With that in mind, it helps to build a strong lineup and also to harvest spawn points early in the match so you can spend them over the cold, harsh winter. <laughs> The M18 got us some good spawn points, and we did well enough in the A2D with that triple kill to secure a bit of a spawn points advantage and shift the battle in our team's favor. This was a comeback match for sure. Uh, they definitely looked like they had us, and I'm not really one to brag excessively, but I have been fairly active in this match, especially useful on Fulda where the map is so large and repositioning takes an amount of time that is not insignificant, especially at this battle rating, where many of the more powerful vehicles will not be able to be in the right place at the right time. Being aware of where my allies are positioned, I decide that it's time to take a forward scouting position, and this would be, well, pushing the pawn forward. Myself the pawn. <laughs> so, 
Once again, we're following some of our rules. Uh, one of the main things that I like to do is have an avenue of escape that takes two or three seconds at the most to get out of the line of sight of potential enemies. Uh, the backside of a ridge is a perfect example of such. Maybe I peek a bit of my tank over the ridge, although that is rather risky, but I can always back up very briefly and be out of sight of the enemy. Now, pushing up aggressively to a forward scouting position. Again, I'm trying to be aggressive. I'm trying to conceal myself, but also scout as much terrain as possible. Match just about finished at this point with the enemy not in position to retake the capture zones. We see that Ostwin. Notice he's not looking at us and wait until he's almost behind some bushes to take our shot. That way if we miss, he might not be able to see uh, from his location exactly where that shot came from, which could buy us needful seconds against that very powerful SPAA. Anyway, that's just about going to do it for this match. I don't accomplish a whole lot else, but hopefully I can show you a thing or two about positioning and just some simple principles that you can apply to any vehicle you're playing in War Thunder to help you get the most out of them. This was a good example of positioning and setting up in good scouting positions, looking over cover, knowing our escape routes, and in the heat of the moment when we were running in the M18, we did successfully disengage from the first Panther. And in that circumstance, you want to drop down a ridge line, break line of sight, and then reposition, I'd say, at least 100 degrees from where he saw you last. So I'd like to wrap around and then pop up on a different side of the hill from him, and that would have worked out just fine if that second panther hadn't been there. And another thing to keep in mind is that the enemy does have a minimap, and if you get pinged at all, or even if someone sees you, they can ping your location on the map, and you will soon have other enemies closing on your location. In that circumstance, again, it's always helpful to have a plan of escape already in place before you move up to a new position. So these bushes on my right, those would make a good hiding spot. If there's an enemy on the other side of that ridge, I just turn around and drive down the opposite side of the ridge. What if there's a pincer maneuver? Well, then I'm in something of a more tight spot. I might have to aggressively try and take one of those enemies down. And with soft cover to fire through, that is a possibility. Anyway, these are all things you can think of ahead of time before you spot the enemy or before enemies spot you. And if you already have a plan for how to engage the enemy and how to disengage from the enemy, that can help you quite a bit. And that is definitely a chess principle as well. You plan an attack and you plan defenses before the pieces move. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. You watched one of my own replays for once. And I'm definitely looking forward to featuring more of what you guys have to offer on the channel. That shot almost hit. And we'll never know what happened to the last one. That was the end of the match. Anyway. That was a good one for us, and I had a good time. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.